Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about ofloxacin. How this drug acts as antibacterial agent. What is the mechanism? Precautions, side effects, drug interactions and clinical indications of this ofloxacin we will discuss in this video. What is this drug ofloxacin? We can see the suffix floxacin. This indicates this drug is a fluoroquinolone antibiotic. We have other fluoroquinolone antibiotics well known with the suffix floxacin such as ciprofloxacin, norfloxacin, leofloxacin, moxifloxacin. You can see that all these are having the same suffix floxacin which indicates they are fluoroquinolones. And among these the third one levofloxacin is one of the drug which is the levoisomer of the ofloxacin. So today in this video we are going to discuss about this ofloxacin. What is the chemical nature of this drug? So this is the structure of ofloxacin and here we can observe a fused ring with quinoline ring system. So this is the ring of quinoline which is attached with fluorine at sixth position and ketone group at the fourth position. So this ring is nothing but quinolone with a fluorine group. So it is a fluoroquinolone. But in the ofloxacin, we can observe another ring system that is going to be fused with this quinoline ring system. So this is the another ring system that is fused with the quinoline ring system. This is nothing but oxazine. That's why ofloxacin can also be considered as oxazinoquinolone. So this is the ring system present in the ofloxacin. Ofloxacin is effective against both gram-positive infections as well as gram-negative infections. Particularly this drug ofloxacin is effective against acute bacterial exacerbations of chronic bronchitis. In this acute bacterial manifestation, we can observe few of the symptoms such as severe cough, wheezing, chest congestion and dyspnea difficulty in breathing. In such conditions ofloxacin can be used. And this drug is also useful in the treatment of complicated urinary tract infections. So urinary tract infections produced by E. coli or Klebsiella species can be treated by ofloxacin. And in this complicated urinary tract infections, we can observe few of the symptoms such as urinary urgency, urinary frequency and hematuria, the blood in the urine and burning pain during the urination. So these symptoms can be minimized by ofloxacin as it is effective against E. coli and Klebsiella species. Similarly, ofloxacin is also effective against community acquired pneumonia, commonly known as CAP, which is going to be produced by Haemophilus influenza, otherwise Streptococcus pneumoniae. Again, in such condition, ofloxacin can be used. And apart from these indications, this drug is also effective against uncomplicated skin and skin structure infections urethritis, cervicitis, even acute pelvic inflammatory disorders. In all these conditions, ofloxacin can be used. Now let us see how this drug acts. Ofloxacin being it is a fluoroquinolone, it can act on the topoisomerase enzyme. So this drug is effective against topoisomerase 2, which is commonly known as DNA gyrase, as well as it's also effective against topoisomerase 4. These two enzymes are responsible for DNA replication by relieving the topological strain in the DNA strands. So both of these enzymes are blocked by ofloxacin. DNA gyrase is one of the enzymes responsible for DNA replication. This enzyme is also called as topoisomerase 2. Now this enzyme can act on the DNA coil which is having the positive supercoil. This positive supercoil is not ready for replication. It should be uncoiled to relieve the strain such that it can undergo DNA replication. For that DNA gyrase is required. Now this DNA gyrase can bind to this positive supercoil and it can cut the DNA strand such that we can observe a nick in the DNA strand. And after this opening the DNA strand can be rotated and it can be resealed such that now the DNA strand is having negative supercoil. Now you can observe that the direction of coiling is reversed. In this negative supercoil conformation, the bacterial DNA can undergo DNA replication. 
In this way, DNA guidance plays an important role in the initiation of DNA replication. Now here, ofloxin can block this DNA guidance enzyme. It can inhibit the DNA guidance enzyme such that it cannot produce the negative supercoil. In this way, DNA replication can be inhibited by ofloxin. Similarly, ofloxin can also act on the topoisomerase 4. During the DNA replication, the DNA is present as a catenated form. So here the topoisomerase 4 is going to cut open and relieve the strain such that these catenated DNA can be converted into decatenated DNA. Now this topoisomerase 4 can bind to this catenated DNA and it can cut open such that they are going to be released and they produce decatenated DNA. In this way, topoisomerase 4 is responsible for release of the DNA. So here ofloxin again acts on this topoisomerase 4. This ofloxin can bind to this catenated DNA such that this topoisomerase 4 cannot act on this catenated DNA such that it cannot be converted into decatenated DNA. In this way, ofloxin can inhibit the release of the DNA by the action of topoisomerase 4. By inhibition of both topoisomerase 2 as well as 4, ofloxin inhibits the DNA synthesis, thereby it produces antibacterial activity. What are the precautions? Ofloxin is one of the drug. It can increase the QT interval within the ECG. So it can precipitate one of the condition, torsades depointes. So this is one of the fatal cardiac arrhythmias which should be closely monitored. So this can be observed as an increased QT interval within the ECG. Few of the drugs like class 1A antiarrhythmic agents such as quinidine, disopyramide, prokinamide. Similarly, class 3 antiarrhythmic agents like imidarone, sotalol, dofetilide, ibutilide. All these drugs are going to block voltage gated potassium channels, thereby they can increase the QT interval within the ECG. Now, this ofloxin can also increase the QT interval. So, this drug should not be combined with class 1A drugs as well as class 3 drugs. Similarly, another important precaution of ofloxin is that this drug can increase the phototoxicity. So, photosensitivity is going to be increased, which may result in few of the symptoms such as burning of the skin, blistering on the skin, erythema, exudation, and edema on the skin. So, all these photosensitive reactions are observed when this ofloxin is administered to the patients who are excessively exposed to either sunlight or UV radiation. That's why whenever this ofloxin is used for long term, the patient should not expose it to the sunlight directly for longer periods in order to prevent the phototoxic reactions. Similarly, ofloxin can also increase the tendon ruptures, tendon disorders. This may result in few of the symptoms in the patients. So whenever we observe few of the symptoms such as swelling, pain, weakness, inflammation at the joints and joint pain. If any of these symptoms are observed, it may indicate some tendon rupture and then the drug should be stopped and replaced with alternative agent. This tendon rupture is a common side effect observed with all the fluoroquinolones and particularly this risk is more observed in the patients who are having the age greater than 60 years. And particularly those patients who are under the treatment of corticosteroids, the tendon disorders may be further increased because corticosteroids can produce osteoporosis-like effects. Similarly, ofloxin can also increase the risk of myasthenia gravis. It can produce some muscle weakness as well as difficulty in breathing. So these symptoms should be carefully monitored when this drug is prescribed for chronic use. And it can also increase the peripheral neuropathy. So this neurotoxicity produced by ofloxin may result in few of the symptoms such as numbness, some neuronal pain, burning as well as tingling at the hands and feet. So if a patient is already having any neuropathy, ofloxin can further increase this peripheral neuropathy. What are the drug interactions? Few of the drugs like sucralfate, which is an ulcer protective agent. Similarly, antacids, which are containing the divalent and trivalent cations like calcium and aluminum salts and food like milk, zinc preparations, iron preparations, all these can interfere with the absorption of ofloxin and they can reduce the absorption of ofloxin. 
This is because of formation of a complex and this complex is non-absorbable which results in the reduced absorption of ofloxin. Similarly, ofloxin can inhibit the cytochrome P450 system. So this is one of the metabolic enzyme inhibitor which may result in the increased levels of few of the other drugs which are co-administered with ofloxin. This drug can increase the serum levels of theophylline warfarin, cyclosporin and anti-diabetic agents like gliburide. All these serum levels are going to be increased which may result in the increased toxicity of these drugs and particularly ofloxin can increase the gliburide and other oral hypoglycemic agents resulting in the increased hypoglycemic effect. So that's why whenever this ofloxin is given to the diabetic patients who are under the treatment of either insulin or oral hypoglycemic agents, the hypoglycemic effect may be further increased because of ofloxin. What are the side effects? Ofloxin mainly produces the central side effects. It produces nausea, headache, insomnia, dizziness, vertigo, syncope, particularly if you have the symptoms like dizziness, vertigo, syncope, all these are the vestibular disorders that can be precipitated by ofloxin. It can also produce a diarrhea and this diarrhea may be due to the development of Clostridium difficile infection. Just like other antibiotics, ofloxacin can also increase the Clostridium difficile infection which increase the CDAD, Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea in the patients. And it can also produce abdominal pain dry mouth, flatulence, some joint pains and vaginitis can also be observed with ofloxin. How it is given? Ofloxin is available as a tablet form and is also available as a solution which is used for ophthalmic purpose and as a tablet it is given by oral route and the dose of the drug depends on the type of clinical indication. Normally the dose is variable from 200 to 400 mg given for every 12 hours so it is given twice daily. But in the patients who are having the renal impairment, the dose is going to be reduced. So when this creatine clearance is in between 20 to 50 ml per minute, the dosage adjustment should be done such that ofloxin is given once daily instead of twice daily. And when this creatine clearance levels are less than 20 ml per minute, then both dose as well as dosing interval should be modified. So it is given at half dose once daily. So dose is going to be reduced to half and dosing interval is going to be increased to 24 hours. In this way ofloxin doses can be adjusted in the renally impaired patients. So that's about this ofloxacin. Ofloxin is a fluoroquinolone. But this fluoroquinolone ring system is further fused with the oxygen ring system. So ofloxin is also having oxygenoquinoline ring system. This drug acts by inhibition of both topoisomerase 2 as well as topoisomerase 4. Topoisomerase 2 is also called as DNA gyrase, which is responsible for the conversion of positive supercoil of the DNA into the negative supercoil of the DNA, which then facilitates the DNA replication. So this cutting, rotation and resealing of the DNA by DNA gyrase is blocked by ofloxin. In this way, ofloxin can inhibit the DNA replication. Similarly, it can also block the topoisomerase 4 enzyme which is converting the catenated DNA into the decatenated DNA such that the release of new DNA molecules can be inhibited by ofloxin. This drug may increase the QT interval within the ECG resulting in the precipitation of torsed ST point is, and it can also increase the photosensitive reactions like burning, blistering, edema, erythema and exudation and it can also increase the peripheral neuropathy, myasthenia gravis. When this drug is given with the antacids, zinc preparations, iron preparations, even the sucralfate and milk, they reduce the absorption of ofloxin by formation of insoluble complexes. And ofloxin can inhibit the metabolic enzymes such as cytochrome P450 system, thereby it inhibits the metabolism of other drugs. It can increase the serum levels of theophylline, warfarin, cyclosporin and anti-diabetic agents like the gliburide, glibenclamide, insulin. So particularly when this ofloxin is combined with the anti-diabetic agents, it may result in the increased hypoglycemic effect. So these drug interactions should be thoroughly checked when this ofloxin is going to be prescribed with other drugs.
Vestibular disorders like the dizziness, vertigo, syncope and drowsiness are the important side effects of ofloxin and it can also produce a diarrhea because of the development of Clostridium difficile infection. It can precipitate some flatulence, vaginitis, abdominal cramps and this ofloxin is available as a tablet form as well as a drops. The dose of the ofloxin is variable from 200 to 400 mg given for twice daily. But in the renally impaired patients, the dosing interval is increased to 24 hours otherwise the dosage is going to be reduced to half based on the extent of the renal impairment. So that's about this ofloxin. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.